now we come to the second part of the babar which is not very well known and i think this is important for you to understand because we know him as a king and and a warrior but in uzbekistan he is more known as a writer and a poet his academic contributions are uh, his autobiography and i must stress that the autobiography which he has written is is you know is an important part because we don't see many kings writing their own their own autobiographies so his contribution is not only his autobiography which is waqai babar or diwan and there is a book called mubayyan risala e walidia risala e uruz risala e ozan he invented a khat called khat e babri and he has a visaya nama which is now lost and he has also contributed to some hindustani words and also that he uh, did a musical contribution but this was left over because of the time period next so his autobiography is called babar nama or wa or when abdul rahim khan khana translated it he called it waqiat e babri then is commonly known as tuzuk e babri but in the description of the book he says that uh, he calls uh, it waqiat so i think probably the best name which we can call is the waqai babar he he himself did not name his autobiography and uh, i think uh, i feel that because he is repeatedly saying that the in these waqai in these waqai so probably it's better to call it waqai babar next he wrote it in turki language his mother tongue and not in farsi because farsi was the lingua franca of the time he did not give any long introduction and his narrative is direct and to the point next the major part of this was written in india as mentioned by his daughter gulbadan begum and he wrote you know about 1910 hijri or uh, and uh, about waqiat about 1910 hijri in 1932 the earlier part is in a narrative style but character of the uh, autobiography changes during kabul days when it becomes like a diary and gives an exact date for example 8th jamadi usani 1912 when he met mirzas in herat this is the party which mirza threw through in his honor and he is one on the right side sitting there on the floor the autobiography is frank open and self critical not much promotion of himself there is a little bit but not much best ever by any monarch in the world he describes his military adventures he writes about his life family and sisters not much about wives a little bit of mention of them but not much details he gives opinion about people he met his companions and his relatives and comments on their characters he described the history and geography of the countries he passed through he describes the countryside he describes the animals birds fishes and other animals found in water he described plants flowers and he shows his interest in nature and all creatures great and small next he describes his disappointments his failures and most unusually he also describes his illnesses and injuries the time he spent in illness how long it took him to recover we have 21 years of his life in in waqai babar the other parts of the life has unfortunately being lost then there are two big gaps and these are partly i think accidental that he, they were lost in the transit or during the times next the manuscripts of waqai babar are a number of them available the original one i think is lost we can we have not found it yet khane khana namaz uh, uh, is the one which is most more commonly available and is is a persian translation a humayun's turki edition is available in edinburgh 
there is a turkey edition in salar jung museum in hyderabad which is probably of 1700 and then there is babar namaz of kehar which is in uh, uh, russia there are a number of british uh, library copies and there is a leiden and arskin translation of 1924 and there is a beverage which is the most well known because it has got lot of commentaries which was written in 1912 then there is a translation of uh, in persian and published in bombay in 1912 uh, and then uh, there is there is french translation german translation the first urdu translation of of babar nama was a, by nasiruddin haider in 1924 and was published from delhi ig mano of japan has worked very hardly on the different Mahtutas of Babar Nama and has published a authentic uh, Turki edition in in from Japan, and there is also the text and translation of English, and there is a Uzbekistan translation in two thousand and two, and this all was detailed in I G Mano's book. So it has been translated into Turki, Farsi, English, Urdu, Hindi, Sindhi, Arabic, German, and and French. and uh, the one on the right side is the uh, uh, farsi edition of abdur rahim khan khana which was done during akbar days and the one on the left is the turki edition of uh, salar jung museum hyderabad which is still available as you know a eastern person cannot be a complete man until he is a shair and he and that's what applies to him as well so he has two divans Uh, one of the perfect examples of great classical chuktai work of 16th century that's that's what blal yusul of the uh, turki says that this is one of the best known um, divans of uh, you know of, of sayyiduddin babar Ra- rampur rada library ha- has a divan which is a hindi divan Hind- uh, rather i would say that which is a divan which he wrote during hindustan period which is about a little bit less than 5 years and there is a istanbul university uh, maktouta available there is top copy museum in of the uh, of the divan and there is a moallam gavdit of istanbul and there is a paris paris divan and there is a tehran Tal- sultanati library divan it has been the, the, uh, the divan has been published by bilal yusul and this is the ph- photograph of the bilal yusul नथा ऐसा अहद पैमा बार आखिर जुदा होकर कर गया बेकरार आखिर खिलाफ किस्मत हथियार क्या आजमाऊँ यार को कर दिया बिजोर बार आखिर बिजोर ही इज बाजोर ऑफ टुडे एंड दिस इज एन उर्दू ट्रांसलेशन ऑफ इज वन ऑफ द रोबाइज एंड देन देर इज अनदर वन विच ही सेड ऑन ऑन द ईद के हिलाल व यार हों साथ इससे बेहतर ईद नहीं मैं गम जदा हूँ कि माँ रुख की शुनीद नहीं खुशकस्मती पर नाश कर जबकि वो मुखड़ा सामने हो सैकड़ों हो पर इससे बेहतर दीद नहीं ही हैज ऑल्सो यूज हिस पोइट्री टू थ्रेट इन पीपल सो हेयर इज एन एग्जाम्पल ए प्लेस कॉल्ड चंदेरी वॉज फुल ऑफ पगान्स एंड हॉस्टाइल फोर्सेस आई कॉन्कर्ड इट बाई फाइटिंग एंड डेटेड इट फतेह दारुल हर्ब बूत चंदी मुकाम चंदेरी पुरज कुफ़ार हो दार हरबी जरब फतेह करदम बहर हरब क़िले ओ गुश्त तारीख़ फतेह दारुल हरब दिवान्स मेन कंपोनेंट्स आर गज़ल 119 मसनवी 18 रुबाई 210 मुम्मास 57 ही हैज करेक्टेड मेनी अशार्स हिमसेल्फ इन बोथ हिज दिवान्स एंड दिस इज हिज राइटिंग व्हिच इज करेक्टिंग सम ऑफ द अशार्स ऑफ द दीवान this is uh, you know he is regarded as one of the best poets in turki language and most of the work is in turki but some ashars are in farsi the above is the first share he used he said at the 17 years of age no one be as humbled and wretched and and love sick no beloved as you are to me cruel and careless next he has also used hindi words or hindustani words i would rather say in his ashar 
and this is one of the example he says is a muchka na hua kuch havase mana ko moti fakhre ahl gha bas bul gosi pani aur roti i have no desire for coral and pearls for fakir which he says himself ke i am a fakir for fakir water and bread is enough and so one of the share is combined in turki and hindustani and was pointed out by denison ross when he published the hindustani diwan these are other some of the other ashar which has been translated by yunus jafri in the latest edition which you will find here lying lying where of his or during his various um, periods i have no rest and satisfaction in separation from my love and i have no control for my dating i cannot depend on any one to keep my secret i just have no one who i can rely on for relieving my heart ache now this is one of the most famous uh, shair which which is which uh, zahiruddin babar's life can be you know said to be passed through but i think we have to understand this is not his shair this is a shair which is uh, of his uncle and grandfather of so grand uh, grandson of shahrukh khan nowruz or no bahar or gul or me or dilbara babar ba aish ko uske alam dobara nis this applies to his life but it's not his share so the translation is new day new spring flowers wine women babar enjoy the life and will as the life will not come second time <laughs> then we we come to his other contribution and this is the another important contribution called mubayyan nafaisul masir dar fiqa which is and you know detailed name of which is described by hasan askari in in the publication which he did so mubayyan is a book of the principles of fiqh e hanafi written for kamran his son who was ruling in kabul while babar was his on in his adventures in india it has 2258 ashar in turki there is hamd naat followed by kitab us salat kitab us saum zakat and hajj and this was published in 2004 by sehan from istanbul so i think uh, what you have to understand is that this fiqa has two manuscript which are in the uh, in 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 islamabad where 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 there is farang e iran you can you can see them and they are lying there and you can you know inspect them and study them mubayyan has played an important role in spreading fiqh e hanafi in india there are two manuscripts in ganjbakhsh library in islamabad based on mubayyan badayuni the historian called it mubayyan which is which means guidance and sheikh zain has you know written a treatise on it or a explanation of it and called it mubin it used to be learned by heart in madrasa in central asia when they the madrasa student used to uh, read quran and, and and become a hafiz in quran then they used to do hifz of mubayyan khwaja ubadullah ahrar is the sufi of uh, naqshbandi order he he was you know suffering from uh, illness and he saw that if he, he felt that you know this if the sala he can translate from you know farsi into turki you know it, it might help him in recover from his illness it describes beliefs and tenets of naqshbandi tariqa follows the strict observance of formal religious duties to be the sole means of attaining spiritual perfection ecstatic experience and he has advised to keep away from the official aids like sama it was published by akmal ayubi from aligarh in 1968 and farsi prose by arif noshahi who lives in rawalpindi and he has done the you know farsi uh, nasr babar translated this into turki ashar during his illness in 935 or 1528-29 with the hope that he will recover from the ill health as sharfuddin busairi did from his stroke after writing qasida e burda 
concluding lines of babar are prayers for forgiveness for allah and requests for the path of piety and virtue risala e uruz is another contribution which babar mentions in waqai uh, babar criticizing some of the principles of nawai nawai was the major poet of turki language and he wrote a book called mizanul ozan and babar has criticized these rules and regulations and he proposed some changes the manuscript of uruz was lost until it was discovered by the, the turkish scholar called kapru in 1922 in paris more details are given in the risale e uruz for the theory and application like mizan and supplements and supplements mizan ul ozan additional forms of turki poetry are also mentioned like tiyuk and tarkhani another risala he which he wrote is called risale e ozan and it shows the various versions of a shair babar mentions ozan in 933 or 1526 saying he wrote 504 versions of one shair of his and the manuscript is only available in sultanati library in tehran and details are provided by ig mano and according to mano there are 498 ozan there not 504 maybe that some of them are lost it is fortunate that this was first mentioned in the oriental college magazine in lahore in 1958 babar also invented a khat and gave it to scholars so he mentioned inventing a khat in waqai and he wrote khat for qazi ikhtiyar and two samples are available of quran in mashhad quran catalog there of in his script and there is a passage of in tashkan in central asian review but unfortunately uh, the two scripts do not match and i think much more work is required to discover what was his khat There is a wasaya nama which was available in Bhopal State Library. It was bought from a Tonk Muslim who had it in his family, in which he asked Humayu to be fair to the people of Hindustan, uh, Muslim, whether they are Muslims, Hindus, Sunnis, or Shias, and not to destroy places of worship or consume cow's meat. Seems to have vanished from the library when Professor Nath of Agra tried to search for it. but the copies of it are available and he described them in pakistan journal of pakistan historical society in 1994 he has used uh, hindustani words in his language babar has mentioned many hindustani words the spelling of which differ from the usual urdu or hindi they should be regarded as variants and spelling of a foreigner who had a short contact with a strange land its people and its language the contact was obviously indirect there are two people who has worked on the hindustani words mohammad sabir who was in karachi university in turki department he has mentioned the words he babar has used and there is ansaruddin ibrahimov of tashkan who has worked as the phd for his hindustani alfaz his words are like you know for for bandar he would say bandar so this is how we differ from the original hindustani words these are the musical instruments which he, which were during his days uh, like you know persian fiddle or uh, syrian lute or turki qanun he has invented a composition uh, of musical composition called charga but unfortunately i don't think he had a uh, enough concentration or required you know the time to spend on his uh, musical aspect now being a medical doctor i have also studied his illness uh, you know uh, illnesses which he describes in babar and this is the long list of his medical problems most of uh, most in the young age he he suffered from viral illnesses and uh, you know uh, he has also described uh, various uh, you know he had developed uh, love for a boy which he described clearly and then he, his his wounds his injuries were there and he has suffered from sciatica and boils and he has suffered from i think what, what we have to concentrate here is from the year 1923 when he developed fever which keeps recurring 
fever, cough. Then again, the same thing happens here. Ultimately, he started coughing blood. And in 1933, he was poisoned in Agra, which he has described. And then again, he has fever, and this lasted for 40 days. In 1935, he, he has also suffered from the cough again. And in my opinion, and clinical evidence which we have is that he was suffering from tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. The story about, don't uh, contrast that uh, he did not go around the bed of Humayun, which is very well known, but obviously he has love for his son, but I feel that he died of tuberculosis because he was 49 years of age when he died. At a young age, and a person who can, you know, run on the facile of Agra with two people lifting on each side, then he, he suddenly dying at 49 years of age, though there must be some medical reason why he... And I feel that his death was due to tuberculosis. This is his burial place, or bagh e babar in Kabul. This building which is there, which was being renovated when I went there, his grave is inside there, but I think uh, the, most of the grounds were all littered with bombs. So the freak, the, you, we were not allowed to roam around, and, but I think it's a beautiful place which is worth visiting because Aga Khan Trust now has renovated it and people can visit it if there is a chance to go there. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.